What's up fellow engineers, Dr. McKay here and welcome back to my channel. Today's episode is class 2 of my shipbuilding 101. Today's class is hydrogen ships. So let's get started. Firstly, we're going to have a little rundown again of the components you need for your hydrogen ships. As you can see, it's basically the same as the atmospheric, if you watched my previous video. We have a landing gear, the various cockpits and control seats, gyroscope, battery. And this is where it gets a little bit different. We have hydrogen tanks. So you've got a large, small grid hydrogen tank and a small, small grid hydrogen tank. H2O2 generator to generate your oxygen and hydrogen. Your hydrogen small grid engine, like the small one, and the large grid small grid hydrogen engine. Your cargo box, conveyor tubes, antenna, ore detector, your various lights, obviously miner, grinder and welder for whatever your ship's purpose it is, and your weapons if you really want weapons, connector, and some optionals for hydrogen ships would be a, hyd yeah, a hydrogen generator, a reactor or nuclear reactor, a parachute, and LCD screens, which I'll show you how to implement as we build. So that today so are all your components for building a hydrogen ship. Now most hydrogen ships are for leaving the planet's atmosphere and going into space. So you may not have uranium yet, but you will have access to ice. Right, so as you can see, we're starting off with a landing gear like we did in the atmospheric ship, right? So first thing you need to do is build up maybe three blocks. It gives you quite a lot of room and then you could then do that as an extension. So what we could do now, just quickly, Where's the cockpit? You place the cockpit on its side like that for a minute. And then we basically build a bridge to connect there. And then we can get rid of these two and it'll stay there. And now you have access to the bottom cargo pool as well as all the other pools. So this is how you could build a ship in any design. So this is a bit more technical in building and with the atmospheric ship. Now you want a H2O2 generator and as you can see the small ones have two small ports and a large port and if you notice the two small ports will line up perfectly with the cockpit so it's a good idea just to stick the H2O2 or the O2H2 generator on your cockpit and now you have the large port. Now what you could do now is one of two things you could either stick a large cargo box which I would have that way because if you look at the ports you have three three large two on the sides one on the bottom in this orientation and obviously you have a small port there a small port there and one on the top so basically it's mirrored but different size ports so let's just go with that there and that should connect to there one there and large one there and now we need to have a hydrogen tank, which is this one. So that's obviously a large one. Now you can use small, but I don't recommend if you're going into space because you kind of need the fuel. Now you can put one or two on. I kind of like to stick two, just for safety when you're going into space. Now it may look long, but we'll get, get there in a minute. Now you want to stick your connector on the large container like so that's basically the premise of your ship alright and obviously you can design the structure or the frame however you like we're just doing the interior and showing you how to fly and what you can do with it so now we have obviously our tanks we have our O2H2 generator and now we have our cargo box let's think about power alright now you're running a hydrogen ship so you're gonna have lots of hydrogen or lying around hopefully alright you can use a hydrogen reactor or hydrogen engine. All right, now these use small ports, as you can see, it's one port there and one port there, and there's nothing on the bottom. That's just what it is. So I like to stick these just on top. All right, maybe two in between the two ports. 
and you'll see why in a minute. So that's our two engines. Now we do need a couple batteries just for powering up to start with. Now you could do wherever you want with your batteries, but with this I might stick them um, just on the front here. Like one there. And obviously I'll do one on the other side in a minute. But one for a minute. So you kind of you can kind of do a symmetry mode if you wanted to. But this is just generally what it is in a minute. And now we kind of want to make sure we have a gyro. Find your gyros, which is there. Place your gyros somewhere. I kind of like to stick them like right near the cockpit. Yeah, it doesn't doesn't matter where you put them, but I like to stick them close to the cockpit. Now one will do for a minute, and then we can add more if we need to. So now we want to kind of work out where we want to put thrusters. Now, if you're going into space, you need thrusters in every direction. You know, up, down, left, right. You know, every direction, and you need to make sure you have enough lift to get off the planet. So you kind of want to make sure you have one big engine, right, which I'll show you in a sec, and a little little ones. Right, but obviously in space, you could do something which I like to do called Suicide Barons, which is basically you flip your ship around from going forward to reversing, but obviously because you're carrying your momentum, you can use a large engine to slow down. I'll show you that after I build the ship. So now we've got obviously our batteries, our electrical generation, the cargo box and hydrogen tanks. What else do we need? Let's go have a look. So we got batteries, cockpit, gyro, tanks, O2H2, so we need engines, an antenna, depending on what you're going into space for, mining, welding, or grinding. And then we I'll show you these accessories in a minute. So we need now to put on the engines. But firstly, we need to work out where we're going. Now, you can stick your big engine on the back. Now as you can see it's got a large port and it's got four four small ports on each of the ends which does come in handy so what you can do is you can either stick it straight on there which is fine but I kind of like just to extend it out a slight touch with one of these blocks all right now these blocks have three small ports on each side and then all the way around it large ports now you want the small ports for the small hydrogen engines plus conver conveyor tube. So always stick that one there and then stick large one there. And that's our forward thrust. Alright. So now we need some side thrust. Which we can literally put on the ports if we want to, or we can literally build outward with conveyor tubes. It depends on how big your frame is. But for simplicity's sake, we'll just stick one there. And one there, and then do the same on the other side. So one there, Ooh. turn around, one there, and one there. Yep, pretty simple. Now, the next one, you, you need up and down thrust. Now, this can be a bit tricky, especially if you're on a planet, because the little thrusters don't give a lot of thrust, yeah, compared to the big ones. So you kind of need more of them, especially when you're landing on a planet. So go to your small conveyor tubes and run a line along your tanks like that. So that's like the full middle of your ship. Now you can do it however you like, wherever you like, but this is what I'm just doing for a minute. So just along the hydrogen tanks. And then you basically get your small ones. And I like to just stick maybe four each side and we'll see how it goes from there. So that should be eight hydrogen. Just remember, the more hydrogen thrusters you have, the more fuel you will use. That's why I put two tanks on. Now obviously the cargo container can be used to store ice. So, you know, so we've got eight down. All right, and now we don't need as many to go the other way. So we just do one each on each end. So that's four going, pushing down and eight going up. Then obviously we can test it out when we start to fly. Now if we drop, we need to add more downwards or more upwards thrust. My apologies. So depending on what you're going in space for, you might want to take a miner to go mine that precious uranium or platinum for your ion engines. So we could stick either 
a single drill head on, which I'll just do for this demonstration. So we have one single drill head, but yet we want some forward thrust. Well, I'd say forward, it's more like reverse. Alright, so you want it facing that way. So you can use your conveyor tubes again. Now you can do it either on your cockpit, by anywhere else really, and you could basically do this. But I like just do it on the, on the nose here. Alright. Get your small engines, and you stick two for your forward thrust. Pretty simple. But before you get more carried away, there's a little tip I want to tell you. Right? Basically, when you're flying through a vacuum or generally in the atmosphere, you want to turn. Make sure you have in your your toolbar the option to turn off your full or your reverse thrusters because if you don't, it'll use fuel to slow you down when you just want to drift to save energy. So before we make these engines up here, whoop. As another thing, when you're in creative mode, hydrogen engines don't really like to be deleted. So, just be careful. So, let's just place our drill back on. Alright, drill, and then our cargo boxes. And I'll sh quickly show you in the toolbar, or the, the menu, what I, I'm explaining here. So basically, you go into your control panel, and then you want to find your all your hydrogen thrusters. So the easy way to do that is to go up to the, the search bar, and then type in hydro, and it'll come up with everything that's hydrogen, hydrogen in the name, so tanks and whatnot. Now you want to basically highlight all of the hyd the small hydrogen. So where it says large, leave for a minute. I'll tell you why in a, in a sec. Go to block and type in. Small. That's not how you spell small. Small hydro or anything you want. Save it and then come into the menu. Oh. It's just for this. Oh. So basically, just come into the menu, go to small hydro and press Y, and it'll get rid of all your small hydrogen engines. But the, the group box will still be there. So it's easy. Now you've done that. When you place your reverse engines, it'll be easy to find in your control panel. So now, you go up to it, go into the control panel, and there you go. The two backwards hydrogen thrusters are there, so you group them up as well. Then we type in small back hydro, simplicity, save. And we might want to group up your hydrogen tanks as well. I'll tell you why in a minute. So just put hydro tanks. Save. What else we got? The hydrogen engines are fine. <clears throat> Obviously, large engines fine because it's a single grid. So I think that's it for grouping up. So that's basically the ship's layout. Yeah, you, know, you got your downwards thrust. Now you could, you may need some more, but we have to see what we need in a minute. So now we need to fill it up with some ice. Now I do have some ice already mined in the cargo box, and I'll show you something in a minute that you would need to have before building an ice ship, now a hydrogen ship. So let's just fill her up. So chuck the ice in here. Now it should go straight into the H2O2, which it has there, and now it should start filling up the hydrogen tanks. Now to check them, just go to the port and go to the control panel, my bad, and go to your hydrogen tanks, and as you can see, in the right hand column, it's, fill it's filled 0.6%. So, oh, keep forgetting you can't sprint in this game. Alright, so just get all your, all your ice you have mined, and I have like 20k I think it was, or something like that. And I fill it up. And we still have to connect these hydrogen engines up. I 
Now sometimes the connector doesn't always transfer it straight into the cargo box. So you do have to be careful when filling up from the cargo box. So you just use this container, this port for a minute to fill it up. Now the, this large cargo box can hold a lot. It can hold, well, I, depending on what settings you have anyway, mine can hold 15,000 litres. So it's pretty good. Let's just fill her up a bit more. But this may not be enough ice to get you off the planet. So you have to make sure you bring extra ice. My recommendation is to make sure your hydrogen tanks are full to the top. So the 100% both of them and then at least have 10,000 ice in your cargo box as backup just in case. Now you, and you'll see why in a minute. So let's fill her up. So that's 10,000 ice in there. Our tanks will slowly be filling, but instead of going into your cargo box to check, well, into your control panel to check how much hydrogen you have, this little tip I'm about to show you is pretty handy. Uh, and you can do it on Xbox, which I'm playing on, without using any scripts or any mods. It's already built into the game. And not many people know this, so you go to the LCD screens, depending on what size you want. That's a transparent one. Let's just go with the little one. Put it there if you want. I know it's taking up the, the panel, but it's fine. Just go into your control panel, find the LCD screen, come into it, do go to scripts, and you already have a bunch of in-game scripts. Now if you go to energy and hydrogen, and then just I like to change it to black and white, so it's a lot clearer to see, especially when you're flying around. Alright, you come to it now and it'll tell you how much power you're generating and how much hydrogen is in your tank. So at the moment we've got 5%. Now 6%. So it's a lot easier to have that somewhere on your ship to show you your fuel and your energy loadout. So the other thing that I wanted to point out before obviously you fly and before you build one of these is you want to make sure you have, which is over here, at least one or two large hydrogen tanks filled with hydrogen with a connector port to it. And as you can see, I'm about I'm at 20%. I haven't done a lot of ice harvesting, so that's all the ice I have at the minute. So that tank is 20% fuel. Now, 20% fuel in a large tank is a lot of hydrogen, <clears throat> right? So obviously, we may not have enough ice in our ship here to essentially go into space. So what we could do now. Now, just keep the landing gear on a sec. So now we want to quickly go in and we want to basically sort out our toolbar. So, small back, always do up top. Turn off and on. And at the back, I like to um, the connector. have the connector at the back. So you have that switch lock. Left, you can have your all your hydrogen engines, <clears throat> which is that one. And then your, your right one, you can either set your, your drill, and then obviously your next pages you can set like whatever you want. So obviously you have your batteries to set the charge when you group them up, your hydrogen engines on and off, yeah, because obviously when they're on they still use hydrogen, when they're off they don't, so you can literally use a charge of your batteries, and then turn them off, run on the batteries. It's really up to you how you want to work it. So let's just do that for a second. Alright, so we want to disengage. We're flying, we're going up, it's good. Keep an eye on the hydrogen. Now it's going to use up all our hydrogen, I believe. So hopefully it doesn't use it. We need to come to this connect port without running out of hydrogen so we can make it. And lock it up. Oh, a little scary then. Zero hydrogen. Now it could be a simple fact that I'm in creative mode and it let me fly regardless if my hydrogen is not or, or, my hydrogen is run out or not. But as you can see, our hydrogen is zero and our base is on 21% because I think it's now draining the ice from the ship. Now you want to quickly have also a button that's have stockpile on and off, turn it off. And hopefully if I've set it up right, which I may don't think I have, we have to, we want it so the tanks drain 
all from it auto refills. So I think I need to just go into it. Ah, there we go. Right, I figured it out. Basically, you want to set your ship's hydrogen tanks to auto, well, not auto, to stockpile, right? And it basically it will drain, as you can see. I'm at almost 100% hydrogen just while doing that. So it may take some tweaking, and depending on how your building set up, you might want to do your hydrogen tank farm separate from anything else, just in case it, it, it does work. But obviously I've drained, like, I've got 100% almost in hydrogen, and I've lost, obviously, what I had in here. So our ship is basically kind of ready to go. Now, as you saw, it could take its own weight in flight, so now we want to quickly just get rid of this landing gear because who needs landing gear? Not me. We'll get that one in a minute. Alright, and we'll stick the other battery on top. Find the other battery. Stick it there, I think that's where it was, on the other side. Yep. Alright, and now you want to quickly hook up your your generators which I like just to do that yeah, and it leaves room for other connections if you need to but now we want to quickly go into it go into your control panel and find those hydrogen engines and just block them so uh, where are we looking just get rid of that one so it's these two Type in hydro power save, and then on your second page, you can literally have that set to find them in groups. Hydro power, turn it off. Set your batteries as well. So we need to undock the ship a sec. So hang on, so it's a lot easier. So undock. One more flat. One more forward. One more forward. Everything should be on. Oh yeah. My bad. Make sure you group your tanks as well, which we have. And turn it to stockpile off. Because when they're on, they don't work. When they're off, they work. So, there you go. Now we're flying. Whew, heart attack before I had to restart. So, find your batteries. You quickly group them up. It's all about grouping and procedures to make sure we get it right the first time and not have any unscheduled disassemblies. So as you can see, just hovering, we're using 96% of our fuel. No wrong one. So that's a recharge. Now we turn off our hydrogen power. We see how fast it drops. Like four. Still 94. Now we don't know. We're not using engine uh, hydrogen power at the minute. So 94. So it's it's kind of right. Obviously, as we move, it will obviously go down. Now you could blueprint your ship. So at this, the next stage could be a bit tricky because obviously, as you go in up in the space, you may you know, lost lost a percent. So what we we'll do? We'll reconnect. Stick on the uh, stop power on. And as you see, it goes back up. Stick batteries on recharge. Alright, and we, you, if you don't know how to blueprint, you press right bumper, go to blueprint actions, and then you create a blueprint, and then you name it your ship. You could do version 1, or prototype, or whatever. Yeah. You could add a few more hydrogen tanks onto this at any point, especially the small ones, because I'll quickly show you the small ones. Uh, where are we at? The small ones are very tiny, and they can connect to anywhere. So you can literally stick like... I don't know. Get it right around. Stick like them there, and you can have boxes next to them to connect. So you you could add more, but for the sake of this video, I'm just trying to keep it as simple as possible to show you how to use hydrogen ship. So as you can see, it's all together. We've got enough thrust. Could have done a bit more forward thrust, but I'll show you. I'll show you how I fly. It's a bit more challenging, but it's good. So before we leave and go into space. 
may be able to parachute. That's one of those things over there I said was optional. Now, a parachute will save your ship if you decide, well, not if you decide, but if you uh, run out of fuel, if you need to redo your design. But this is literally just to show you how to make a hydrogen ship. So, I think one parachute is enough, but let's just do two for argument's sake. Come back in here. Then we want to basically group them up. Now we want to basically, we can either do auto deploy or manually deploy. Yeah, you know, now obviously if you auto deploy it, I'm not sure if they deploy when you're at that level or you have to be kind of falling. So what I like to do is I like to manu manually deploy. So go to groups, again, shoots, then do open. But just literally don't touch it. You know, because I'm not sure if they're like they reuse after you use them. I actually haven't really used a lot of parachutes because most of my ships kind of don't fall. They kind of just fly. So now we want to do a test flight into space. Now obviously as you can see up in the sky I've got a moon really close. Let's see if we can head towards it and we'll and get into space and I'll show you how to fly. So first things you want to do is make sure you're not on stockpile. So take stockpile off. Your batteries off recharge because you, you need power and then you want to disengage and now we're free. Now, as you can see, we are flying, and it's quite sleek and slim, but you can obviously make it as wide as you want. Like I said, as you're flying forward, you don't, you kind of don't need any other thrust apart from for the reverse thrust. So we want to just kind of go forward, all right, get some speed, go up. And as we're going up, this is why I told you to group your engines. Once we get to a, almost a vertical of 100 meters, turn off all your engines. So your forward and all your side thrusters and dampeners, well not dampeners, your all your other axes and just go on your rear engine alone. That way it will save you fuel and you don't have to worry about it. As long as you are going vertical and you're not trying to spin around in any different which direction, you should be fine. As you can see we're going with one engine up. Now to get into zero G is about, from Earth, it's about 45,000 meters up. So it's about 10 minutes worth of space flight. So if you if you if you get to about here, which is like 5,000 meters almost, and you almost run out of hydrogen, then your ship ain't gonna make it in space. You kind of want to get every, say, 10,000 meters. You want to do maybe 10 fuel, you know, like yeah, 10 hydrogen. And obviously, I made a boo boo as well. My storage box doesn't have any ice in because when I was messing around with trying to refill my ship the base stole the ice so I may need to spawn some in just to demonstrate how it works or I can mine some off the moon because as you can see the moon has got some ice but I think I've spawned this moon in really close I'm not sure if we can actually make it to zero G before we actually hit the moon so we're definitely coming up I'm not sure how physics is going to work it I'm not sure if I'm going to just impact it. Let's uh, fly a bit to the side, shall we? Now, as long as you're going forward, you don't worry, you have to worry about going down. You carry, you carry your momentum. So, we'll just skip ahead to when we're in space. I'll see you in a minute. Right, we're back a little bit early because obviously, where I've positioned the moon so close to the Earth like planet. To get into space, you've got to kind of go through the moon's gravity as well. So as you can see, we're only at like 24,000 meters. And I think that's from the surface of the moon because the Earth's there and we are over the moon. So keep that in mind when spawning in planets. If you get them too close, you'll have two planets to try and get out of the gravity well. But we've still got 79% fuel, so we should be right. And we're at 0.44 G. So we're technically about... 15,000 meters from the planet Earth, or the Earth like planet. Obviously, the moon's gravity is slightly less. I think it's like 0.60 G. 0.60 G. I'm not quite sure at the 
Moon's level. Someone may mention it in the comments. Help a brother out, like. Or fellow engineer out. So we're still pretty good. Now what I like to do when you get into space is turn off your dampers. So that's LB and Y, turn off dampers. So you so you, go, you get your thrust to, or you get your speed to the full, which is 100 meters a second. And with no other engines on, you kind of just coast along, along and you won't use your fuel. But obviously you do drop in speed due to gravity pulling you back down. So make sure you don't drop below 80 meters a second, otherwise it'll just be a pain in the ass trying to get back up. And there you go, you just press the button every so often and you don't use your hydrogen. Now you do use it because your engine is on, but not as much as if it was firing like that. So as you can see, we are going in space, be it a bit around the moon. But for the demonstration, I want to show you of how I stop and what we need to be in zero G. So what we'll do is I'll skip ahead to when we're in zero G and I'll see you in a minute. Right, quickly just come back. We're not in space yet, but if you look at my meters, we're at 15,000 meters. I think it's changed back to the Earth's meterage now. And if I turn the camera around, as you can see, we're more over Earth than the moon now. So I think that's what is taking into account. And there's the actual the moon that come with the planet Earth in this game. I just spawned that moon in to demonstrate in one of my other tutorial videos. So as you can see, we're about 20,000 meters. So 0.30 G is about 20,000. So we've got another 20,000 more meters to go, and I'll see you then. All right, and we're back, but we're still not in space. But as you can see, over my top left of the ship, obviously that's not 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 Mars, but the asteroid or, or the whatever it is, the rock. You know, now we're getting to the point where we can actually mine or go to places where we can mine resources in space. Now I'm still kind of coasting with dampers off and just thrusting up to 100 meters a second when it gets a bit low. And as you can see, my fuel cost is stays steady about half, well coming up down to half. We've still got another 13,000 meters to go before we get out of zero G. And once you're in zero G, fuel is quite efficient because you're not constantly thrusting. And obviously, you can turn it off. And obviously, I'll show you when we get there. So, see you in about another. Well, see you in a second after we get into space. Right, and we're back, but we're still not in space. I know I keep saying I'll, I'll be back when we're in space, but I'm just pointing out a few tips of the trade as you're flying through space. Now, the tip is here, if you look, notice, as we're getting down to almost zero G, we're 0 0.8 G now. Obviously, with dampers off, you're not actually slowing down that fast like we were before. So as we're still on 90, we're over 90 meters a second, obviously one thrust up, we go back up. You know, so you can save your fuel quite well at this stage, just keep an eye on your speed. It doesn't drop that fast, so good little tip if you are r almost running out of fuel, so if you're like 40 now instead of 66. Yeah, but your first priority when getting into zero G is pick an asteroid and go into it and see if you can find ice. So we'll quickly demonstrate that of traveling through space with a hydrogen ship before we end this today's class on hydrogen ships. We've only got another 10,000 meters to go before we're at zero, so we'll see you then. Right, now we're back and we're in zero G. So what we want to do now is we want to pick an asteroid to go to. Now there's a nice little cluster over here. All right, now obviously we're now coasting and we're not going to slow down now unless we slow down ourselves. Now you can turn on your dampers and then your engines and you will slow, slowly slow down with your forward engines here. But not very well because, well, you won't. So the tip I like to use, which is kind of risky, but it's kind of realistic in a sense of how real world spaceships or spacecraft like slow down, is now you want to turn around. So you're facing the direction you're going, which we're heading towards this asteroid, so we're heading this way. All right. Now it may look a bit like what you're doing. Yeah. Now you don't have a lot of control, but if you press forward, you use your large engine to slow down. So if you notice my speed is going down really really quick. Now it's going the other way, I think. So it's hard to tell where you're actually going. Now you do have like little bits of particles flying. There we go, we're going this way now. There we go. Slow down to about 20 meters a second. 
kind of hard to find out where which way you are going. So I think we're going this way. There you go. So now we're about 20 meters a second. You kind of want to just kind of position yourself to where you want to go, which is I want to go over there. All right. So now we forward thrust in that direction. Now we should theoretically be going in that direction. I think we are. We're not going very fast now, so it's not about speed in space. It's about being careful because if you're going too fast and you that asteroid creeps up on you, you don't realize it, and you don't have enough time to spin around to burn, or you don't react fast enough with turning your engines on, you will go and your ship will be destroyed. So just go a little bit faster, a bit more skilled than I I think I am. I hope. What I'm going to do though is I'm just going to turn my forward engines to give me a bit of help when we get there. Just speed up a little bit more. Being brave. Because it may look far away, but I assure you they do creep up on you very quick. So once, we've once I've demonstrated how you approach an asteroid, I think we'll call class dismissed. So it's video is quite longer than the atmospheric one because obviously hydrogen engines do have a lot more skill, know-how and knowledge behind them. And I'm happy to share my experience. So let's just go a bit faster. So as you can see we're now coming up on the asteroids. Now you can get ready for a suicide burn which is what I'm going to do which I think is Close to that. It is quite difficult to get used to it. But I kind of find it interesting, like, especially quite fun. Now, if you watch the expanse, this is how they do it in the expanse, and this is what I like to kind of recreate a little bit. So, as we're coming in quite close, obviously, I've moved my cursor and my trajectory away from the, a collision course. That's what you have to do. Make sure you're not on a collision course, you just go fly right by it. So, if you do not slow down, if you don't slow down fast enough, you don't hit it, you just fly past it. So, just pump the brakes a little bit. We don't want to overshoot it completely. What you got to do is tap it. Still kind of keep an eye on those dust particles, make sure you're going in the right direction. Now I reckon 20 meters a second is just slow enough to be able to do a maneuver and whatnot. So we're still here, we're still moving at about 18. So we just want to thrust a bit more, 30 meters, coming up, a bit too fast. Now you'll slow down. See, it's slower for the little hydros. Now turn on all of your engines for your stability. And that will basically counteract now. As you can see, I'm just altering my my course to match the asteroid. Still with dampeners off, because if you have dampeners on, you just come to a stop. But before I get too close, I will turn dampeners on, because that will basically keep you stop stationary. Right. Now we're coming in a bit close turn my dampeners on and now I'll come to a complete stop and now you have the option to decide what you want to do now you can either get out your ship and have a little scout out because I didn't actually stick an ore detector on this now you, you might, might quick, quickly do that oh. helmet don't forget to put your helmet on yeah. the vacuum of space is bleh. the vacuum of space is really harsh so now we've got an ore detector on Let's just increase the range of it. Where is it? Two. Turn up to 50. And now we just move in ever so slightly. But now we have dampeners on. We will slow down and use a lot more hydrogen fuel. So. Let's go a bit closer. Now we. The first thing we want is ice. Now. Not every asteroid has ice on it. I might pay to go first person for some of this 
scouting. Now, because your range is only 50 meters, space is very deceiving with distance. You could think, oh, that rock over there seems quite close. But in matter of fact, it might be a few hundred meters away. So you've got to kind of get a bit close. Now, I'm quite close here and I'm not getting any pings. Yep. But you just want to be careful in your fuel. That's why I said you could get out. Ah, I thought I was ISIS, just the earth. It's okay though. Like I said, very deceiving. Ooh, slow down. See, too fast. Like I said, about 20 meters a second is just fast enough. So you might pay on an advanced build to so stick a couple small hydrogen thrusters for forward thrust so you turn off your large hydrogen engine so you can control with just maneuvering thrusters that's why I basically call the small small hydrogen engines just maneuvering thrusters nothing yet now this is where you could have lights so what we could do quickly is I'll add a couple lights on find the lights Like that, like that, and we'll, we can basically see what we're doing. We're just, we can enhance our lights as well. Not many people know this. Find the lights. Uh, Alright, highlight the lights. And if you go to intensity, it makes intensity, and obviously radius is max. Yeah, so the intensity makes it more brighter. So as you get closer, it sees more. See? Still no ice though. So what we'll do, we'll keep looking around, we can go manually and whatnot. Got some silicone there, look. But we don't really want silicone, that's just our range of 50 meters. Silicone. Uh, see I just had a just invented a little problem here. Out of all, out of all those built all that building, all that explaining. I don't think I stuck an antenna on the ship, did I? I've lost the ship. Hey. Now, if this happens, you can go into the build menu, or the cheat menu, go to Entities List, and find the so-called ship. Press B, press Y, teleports there, press B again, and you should find the asteroid be there so I literally forgot the antenna so if you've gotten this far in the video thank you for watching and you're probably laughing at me right now just make sure when you build a ship you place an antenna and the antenna will show you where it, where the ship is but make sure you stick your radius up if you're flying off into space but just remember if your antenna radius is up so it's 5,000 meters just do 50,000. It could attract pirates if you're in that type of area. So let's go have a look at some of these exterior rocks for ice. Ice. See if we can find any. There we go, got some ice and some uranium. That's a nice find straight off the bat. Where's the ice? There's ice there. Some silicone as well. Nice. So now we've got some ice, and where's that uranium thing? There it is. It's there, look. Doesn't look like a big node. Now, now we know where it is. Where's the ship? Now we stuck an, ugh, now we stuck an antenna on. Get in the cockpit. Let's me spin around. Remember to watch your back of your ship. It's this one here, wasn't it? I believe. Yeah. So now we have found ice. 
It's not a lot of ice, but it might do us for a minute and some uranium. Let's have a look. Right. Set your drill on and then mine some using right trigger. Some good ice. Now, ice at this point is more important than uranium. And I want to get as much ice as we fit. Let's have a quick look. So that's 2,700 ice and more. It's all being used. Now what you could do is, while you're fid fiddling around with doing stuff, in that in outside, you can turn your stock part on, and it will just keep generating that hydrogen, making it go up. Now if you look at your tanks inside your thing, they are going up. I think. Yep, but ever so slowly. So obviously, uranium's a nice little find on your first flight out, and obviously uranium's quite rare, and you get more you get more of it the deeper you go into space. So obviously you need to build a bigger ship, iron engines mainly. Now platinum's a good thing to find for iron engines. Now iron engines is gonna be what I'm gonna be doing in the next video. So if you like this video and you think you can master the hydrogen ship and it's resource intensive fuel i hope this video helps you out and if it did please leave me a like and if you haven't already please subscribe tell a friend i've been dr mckay and as always happy building and i'll catch you next time cheers for watching ta-ta bye